Over time, the AL has produced some memorable MVPs, and in this one, we're going to take a look at some of the more recent ones that just so happen to leave their mark just like Ricky did. Let's delve into the winners from the 2010s. That one's well hit to right center field. Long run by Hamilton. He lays out and makes the catch. And that is way back to center field. Josh Hamilton, represented here with his 2010 Topps Chrome Orange Refractor. As we take a look at the back, you'll notice lots of minor league stats, all due to the troubles he brought onto himself throughout his career. In watching him burn, we could only witness him squander away such great, unique talents. 2010 was a glimpse of a phoenix ascending from the ashes as greatness soared high and the AL got to admire sheer beauty, grace with raw power. He was a five-tool menace who drew comparisons to Mays, Mantle, and Griffey. Josh led the AL in average and war while never sacrificing his strength. Stats that equaled Miggy and Cano, who finished second and third. And this with Josh missing a month due to a bruised rib cage. That came from a Superman-like diving play in the outfield. Yeah, it's a shame Hamilton couldn't fulfill a promising career in baseball. But at least in 2010, he gave us a taste of what a truly great player looked like. Well, what Verlander needs to do today is limit the damage early. Here's a 2-2 offering. Swing and a miss. And he got him looking. The 1-0 pitch. Right back to Verlander who knocks it down. His throw. Got him at first base. A 2-2 pitch on the way. Justin Verlander, here with a cool looking horizontal pick framing his leg kick. In the back, it has a career stats, nothing more, but it's the pick that ultimately made me choose this Allen and Ginter card to represent him with his MVP year in 2011. Verlander would lead the league in wins, strikeouts, ERA, whip, and also war that year. All good enough to earn him the triple crown. Jacoby Ellsbury and Jose Bautista would put up a good fight for the award. And, in looking at their stats, it could be argued any one of the three were deserving. The total votes would show the race was kind of close. Ultimately, the nod would go to a player who dominated the league in his craft and made the Tigers proud. Joining Newhauser, McLean, and Hernandez, as Detroit had a habit of grooming pitchers who knew how to garner a trophy, usually won by offensive players. We'll be standing in the batter's box right now. Swinging a high drive, deep left center field, way back, track one, game over! Unbelievable! Cabrera wins it with a two-run shot! Miguel Cabrera shown here with his purple refractor from the 2012 Topps Chrome set. In the back, you read about him becoming the second youngest active player to hit for 1,500 hits. In 2012, Detroit would witness back-to-back -back Triple Crown winners, this time of the offensive variety. The Tigers would sign Prince Fielder to add some protection for Cabrera that year, and they would form a potent one-two punch. In the first week of the season, they both showed how destructive a duo they were, as Miggy was awarded the Player of the Week in Week 1. He would never look back, as he proceeded to have a season for the ages. He would even surpass the great Hank Greenberg with five consecutive 30 home run seasons for Detroit. It would be a memorable season overall as Miguel would help lead the Tigers to the World Series, who eventually fell to Posey and the Giants, but nothing can tarnish his accomplishments in 2012, one that saw him run away with the MVP along with the Triple Crown the first to do so since Yaz in 67. All hail the king, Miguel Cabrera. In his minor league days, sends a ground ball left side, Cabrera diving stop from the seat of his pants, throws in! Got it, what a play! Miggy drives one deep in the air to left, down the line, and it is gone, a home run! Oh, you bad boy. Oh, Miguel. 
Yelka for a few ice cold boy. Here's the 3 1. Swing it across. Miguel Cabrera, here with his 2013 Topps Archives Gallery of Heroes card. You'll see there's nothing in the back, well, because it's obviously a stained glass design, and boy what a beautiful insert this is. I'm almost tempted to put together the set. So what would Mickey do for a follow-up to a Triple Crown year? Oh, how about put up a carbon copy to the previous year, with stats that were almost good enough for another crown. If it weren't for Chris Davis and his 53 home runs, ho! Oh, where did that come from? With all that power though, Davis could only finish third, while Trout was showing the world that he's on the brink of greatness and finishing second. Cabrera was the king of the mountain and there wasn't anything anyone could do about it. In back-to-back -back seasons, Miggy was putting his name up along with baseball immortals like Ruth, Fox, Greenberg, Williams, and Joe Morgan. Even Tiger's great Al Kaline was quoted in saying his performance was unbelievable. Surely was for Miguel Cabrera in 2013. Breaky pitch out to the left. Going back on it is. Good! A big block! Walk off stand! And the Angels pick up the That's driven out to right field. Going back on it is Howes at the wall. Mike Trout, here with his Chrome Connection insert from the 2014 Topps Chrome set. It's a gorgeous card to say the least, and in the back, it's comparing him to the likes of Bobby Bonds with his power and speed. So it was finally time for Mike to be king of the hill. After finishing second to Cabrera justifiably two years in a row, nothing would keep Trout from first in 2014. He had a fine year, although he did sacrifice his average and speed in doing so. He attributed his poor average and high strikeout rate to his golf swing. He added, he was working with staff and trying to correct it, but you would never think it by how he spends his downtime. Nonetheless, he would still have a respectful average good enough to hold off Victor Martinez and Michael Brantley, as he would run away with the award unanimously. The MLB was witnessing the new face of baseball just getting all warmed up with Mike Trout. Popped up, Donaldson will go to the rail. He'll get there, dives in and caught it! Oh, what a play! Yeah, yeah! Fly ball deep to right! Get up, get up, God! Game winner! Walk off, Josh! Josh Donaldson, here with his 2015 Bowman's Best Cracked Ice Refractor. If it's one thing I simply love about adding MVP winners in the modern era, it's in having all these magnificent examples to choose from. I mean, I can't stop looking at this card. It's simply mesmerizing. Alright, but enough about that. Let's get into 2015 for Josh Donaldson. He would get traded from the A's for Brett Lowry, Kendall Graveman, Sean Nolan, and Franklin Barreto. Obviously, the A's would never get equal compensation for the caliber of player Josh was, but that's the fate of a small market team. Donaldson would go on to have himself a career year. He would lead the league in runs and RBIs while showing pop and having a nice average. He was pretty consistent throughout the whole year. Trout did his best to defend his award. They would tussle all year until the ending of August, in which the opposing fans would chant MVP in recognition of the year Josh was having. In 2015, the voters and the fans would all make Josh Donaldson the clear-cut winner for the MVP. Put it like that one. This one now toward left center field, tailing away from Trout. He'll dive, and did he get it? He did! Swinging first pitch, drives one out to 
straightaway setup. Trout moving back, still drifting back. He's at the wall, leaps up, and he got it! Mike Trout just robbed Leonis Martino. With 76 for the Oakland A's. And then it's sky high deep to center. He's done it again. It's three to two. Mike Trout here with his 2016 Topps Update All-Star card. I simply love the shot of Trout admiring a bomb with a cool cameo of Buster Posey and Big Poppy in the dugout. In the back, you'll see lots of All-Star stats for Trout, but it's the front that makes this a winner for me. So in 2016, what's new? Well, for Trout, it was business as usual. Another fine year in which he's further proving that he's the best baseball has to offer in choosing a face for baseball. Mookie Betts would prove he was no second fiddle when comparing him to Trout. Add to that Altuve, who finished third, who would throw his hat in the ring with stats that were just as comparable. What couldn't be compared though was that at age 24, he was already having a career that very few ever did by his age. The likes of Mickey Mantle, Mel Ott, Jimmy Fox, and Ted Williams were all looking up at Trout when comparing wars to his age. It's because of feats like this that Trout was looked upon with a different air, one that helped garner him his second award for the MVP in 2016. Light is set. 3-2 again, and Altuve hits this high in the air and pretty deep to center. Taylor is going back at the wall, looking up. Jose Altuve, rounding third with his 2017 Topps Chrome card. In the back, you'll read about him being the first at second to win multiple batting titles since Rod Carew. In 2017, Altuve would have himself such a great year, he would put up stats that led the league in average and hits, while still producing above average with power and speed. Aaron Judge made such a strong case for the award that year, as he led the league in bombs in just his rookie year. He would take the league by storm and was almost the polar opposite of everything that Altuve was. Fortunately for Jose and the Astros, it would be a storybook year that saw them reach the precipice of baseball with the World Series trophy along with its MVP winner. Things were bittersweet though, as a couple years later, nationwide, Altuve and the Astros were asked to explain themselves for stealing signs in baseball. There was no celebrating the merits of their accomplishments including the pride for winning such a great award. Such a shame for baseball and its fans. Sox have out hit the Angels 13 to four. And there's another one. He smokes it deep. Back it up, up then. Kiss it goodbye. The third home run of the ball game for Mookie Betts. They're up for Houston tomorrow. There's a first pitch swing and a base hit by Kemp. And he's thinking about two. Mookie Betts, represented here with his 2018 Topps Chrome card. On the reverse, you read about him and his back-to-back -back 2020 seasons. In 2018, Nick Cafardo of the Boston Globe would compare Betts to Mike Trout. Some thought that argument was outlandish, but Betts would prove to the world that Nick was onto something. Mookie's year was something to behold. He would put up a 30-30 year along with a 346 average, which was good enough to lead the league. Trout would do his part as usual. His numbers were no match for Betts though, as he and Jose Ramirez could do very little to match Mookie Betts. Baseball for that matter did very little as Betts drove the Red Sox straight to the World Series and helped them hoist up the trophy. It was a unanimous decision in 2019 as Mookie Betts would prove Nick Cafardo correct and at least for this year that he was indeed every bit as good or better than Mike Trout. Yeah. Yeah. This one's out towards center, chasing Trout back. Onto the track he goes, leaps up and he got it. MVP's doing MVP things tonight. That is out toward deep left center field. Maddox Smith is back. Go! Big fly for Mike Trout. One title three.
Mike Trout, here with his 2019 Topps Home Run Challenge promo card. You'll see I never scratched off the code on the back, but back to the front, I simply love how the red border picks up his uniform. Some cards just look perfect to me. 2019 saw Trout become the youngest player to reach 200 home runs along with 200 steals, surpassing Barry Bonds. He would also become the highest paid athlete in American sports. Was there anyone better or even close to him? Alex Bregman actually had comparable stats to Trout. He even led the league in war, but when you take into account Mike missed almost a whole month of September due to a procedure in his right foot, it would be the only reason Bregman was even close to matching Trout's stats that year. Mike would edge out Alex in what was a close race. The voters would have their say though, and for the third time in the decade, Trout would be awarded the MVP for 2019. This concludes the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please comment on any thoughts you might have felt from the watching this video. I'll get started on my next video very soon. I'm thinking of maybe deep diving into the 50s next time. Until then, I'ma wish you all happy hunting when it comes to cars. I want everyone to stay safe and be blessed. I will see you on the next one. Bye.